Hello, I'm here with Mark Higgins from UMETSAT and he's going to be talking about the monthly European weather movie for January. Hi there. So we're looking at a very mild start to 2013. You'll see uh, the blue in the image represents ice or snow on the ground. You'll see quite a few patches across Western Europe where there's very little snow on the ground. Um, many weather services reported a very mild start to the year. The other thing you see at this time of year is just the difference in the sunrise and sunset times. As you follow the, the line between light and dark, what we call the terminator, you'll see just how much it varies between the north and the south, that really oblique angle. So very, very early sunset, late sunrise times in the north, much, much earlier sunrises in the south and later sunsets. So much longer days in the, in the south of uh, Europe at this particular time of year. As we get towards the 4th of January, you'll start to see the wind coming from the north, flowing over the Alps, and then into northern Italy, southern Switzerland. The weather services here reported exceptionally high temperatures. As that wind is pushed over the Alps, the cloud dries out, and you end up with very dry air just on the southern side of the Alps. And that dry air can be very, very warm. So there were temperatures of 22.3 degrees recorded between the 4th and the 7th, so this period we're just in now. This effect is known as the fern effect. It's most strongly experienced during the spring periods when you get these really anomalously warm days. So one of the big challenges for forecasters in this time of year is to predict will precipitation fall as rain or snow because it has uh, quite a different effect for, say, road transportation, airport operations. And of course, for children wanting to play in it, they want to know, can I go sledging or not? So you can really see these changes from the cold spells to the warm spells. So right here in Denmark now, the mild spells, temperatures are about plus five. And we're going to see over the next couple of days, those temperatures drop to about minus four. So you'll start to see there'll be a lot more snow over Denmark. Um, this temperature uh, being brought down overnight and during the day. You can see the flow of air coming from the more Arctic areas rather than from the Atlantic. So that flow coming from the north bringing much, much colder air to places Sweden, Denmark, southern Norway. And so that will be quite a, a contrast. So temperatures would have gone from plus five to minus five over the course of a day or so. Here you can really start to see the contrast between southwestern Europe and eastern and northern Europe with the snow. Just have a look at how much snow you can see on the ground here in the east compared to the western parts. Remember what that looks like and when we come to the end of the month you'll just see how much the snow has retreated. In the areas where you don't see cloud, but you can see the snow on the ground, quite often that will be associated with very, very cold nights. So this period in Denmark, they were experiencing very cold nighttime temperatures. You'll see as well in the UK over these next few days, snow starting to return to the north of UK and in central and uh, western Europe in France and Germany you'll start to see the return of the snows. On the bottom left hand side of the screen you'll see the satellite name is uh, labelled, so that's MET9. During this period the third of the Metrosat second generation satellites was declared fully operational. And overnight between the 21st and the 22nd you'll see this change from MET9, there we go, to MET10. Um, so this was the Metrosat second generation satellite number three being declared the prime operational satellite. 
So we're now being looked over by a brand new satellite. What you will have seen, of course, is there's no difference discernible. This is the, the third in a series of satellites. The quality of the instrument and the uh, spacecraft is the same as the, the ones before. It's the same instrument, but it guarantees the uh, monitoring of Europe's weather for the next few years. There you go. You can start to see, if you look at the, the blue underneath the cloud, particularly in Germany and now in the UK, the snow's returning. Quite good uh, skiing conditions this year. All of that variability still brings moisture and fresh snow to the mountainous areas. If you look closely at the UK in between the cloudy spots, you'll see now it's almost completely covered in snow. Um, at this particular period, this is starting to lead to some quite heavy traffic disruption. So this big storm coming just across Denmark now brought a lot of wind, a lot of precipitation across uh, North and Western uh, Europe. So Denmark, Sweden were reporting a lot of rain at this point. And you can see that that would have had the effect of washing out much of the, the snow that had fallen. So we're now entering another mild period. You'll see across the rest of the continent as well, green patches where there's less snow than usual.